Hey there, John Ferriman here from Balanced Physical Therapy. Thanks for watching. So a lot of people think I'm a little nuts because inside of our company every quarter I buy 30 books. Yes, books, actual books, not audiobooks, books. And I pass them out to all of the therapists in the company and at our leadership meeting every week as we read through the book each quarter, we have a meeting about it and we talk about how the lessons in the book relate to what it is we're dealing with as a company right now and how it relates to our company's core values and where it is that we're going as a company because I'm constantly talking about the vision of our company, where we are going together, what we're going to create together, the impact that we're going to make on our communities together. And books are access to some of the greatest minds in the history of the world. And if you're not reading books, I, I'm gonna just put this out there. You're never gonna optimize who you can become if you're not gaining more knowledge on a consistent basis, okay? So it's a requirement if you're gonna be a part of our company, you're reading books, one a quarter, okay? For a year, it's not a big ask. And this book in particular, I'm giving all the credit in the world to Patrick Lencioni. He's one of my favorite business writers of all time. And in this book in particular, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team resonates with me because it's, it talks about the five things that can literally cripple a company if you as a leader are not paying attention to them, okay? And we talked about this in leadership recently, and it's very important to understand. It's on page 188 if you decide to pick up this book, and it's a pyramid, and he just talks about the five dysfunctions of a team from, from the bottom of the pyramid to the top. The first one, absence of trust, okay? If you look at the bottom level of that pyramid right there, absence of trust. What does that mean? It means that your team is afraid to open up to you. Why might that be? Well, probably because you haven't shared with them. You haven't shown vulnerability with them. You haven't been real with them. So they feel timid about being real with you. So how are you ever gonna build meaningful relationships with your team if you can't really trust each other? And I would go back a step. You have to know each other and you have to share with each other. That's the baseline. Okay, so if there's an absence of trust in your organization, it's gonna be very, very hard to have meaningful conversation, productive debate in your meetings, et cetera, to drive results home. Second, if we work our way up the pyramid, the next level, fear of conflict, okay? At base, because we're human, we're all a little bit afraid of conflict, right? But for God's sake, no one's holding a knife to your throat, no one's pointing a gun at your head. This is a conversation with a colleague. It might be a difference of opinion. It might be some conflict resolution between two colleagues that you have to sit down and work through. It might be a salary negotiation, a benefits negotiation, a promotion negotiation, an equity uh, share negotiation. It might be a very difficult conversation, but they must happen and they have to happen safely in an environment where everybody feels free to air out their differences together so that you can get to a better place. Together, okay, as a team. So. If you're afraid of conflict, get yourself a little bit more confidence and don't worry about it. Push through that discomfort to get to a better place. Next level up, the pyramid, lack of commitment. If you as a leader are not committed, what does that mean? It means if you are not willing to do whatever is required of you to get the desired result of your team and of your company, okay, of your mission, your vision, etc., then how in, in the world is your team that you're leading supposed to commit to doing the things that they're supposed to do? If they see you as just wishy-washy and half-assing through your day, not showing up, not keeping your word, not being your word, not doing the things you said you were going to do, meaning you're not committed, why would you expect them to be committed? They're not going to be, okay? If you stand up and you cast a vision and you say you're gonna do something, you better do it, okay? You better commit to whatever it is that you shared with your team. Otherwise, you cannot expect their commitment in return. It's just the way it works, okay? Yeah, Lencioni's a great author. If you haven't read him, highly recommend it. The next level up, avoidance of accountability. Avoidance of accountability. So, in our systems, with our revenue cycle management team, with uh, our, our individual clinic directors, et cetera, et cetera, we have lots of accountabilities built in, meaning if there is a task assigned, if there is a goal assigned, if there is a target assigned to someone, we know exactly who's responsible for it. And we know exactly where to go if someone drops the ball. We don't have to chase the ball around figuring out who said what, who didn't do what, who did what, who did this wrong, who did that wrong. We don't. We don't mess around wasting time like that. We go right to one person, a person. 
okay? Not a department, a person who might be leading that department or who raised their hand and said, I want this responsibility, okay? You have to have accountability and you have to have some back doors to make certain that that person knows they're gonna be held accountable. There's no escaping accountability. We all have it, okay? If you're a founder or, or you're responsible for securing financing for your company or for hiring and for firing, you know what I'm talking about. There's tremendous pressure on you and there's a lot of accountability. People's lives are at stake. So there's gotta be some accountability. And then the last level of the pyramid, the pinnacle of the pyramid, inattention to results inattention to results. Why would any of us abdicate our responsibility to attain our results that we're after or the results that our company's after, the results that our supervisor, manager, director is after, our direct reports? I work for my team, okay? I don't work for myself. I'm the founder of the company. I work for everyone in the company. That is my duty. That is my responsibility to elevate their lives, to help progress their careers, to challenge them beyond their comfort zones, to build them into people that they didn't think that they were capable of becoming. That is my job, to cast a vision. But if I'm not attentive to results, and by extension, if our teams are not attentive to results, how can any of those things ever be possible? They can't, they just can't be. So, without mincing words, if you haven't read The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni, and you are in a leadership position in any type of organization, it doesn't have to be a physical therapy company, please read this book and please understand what is at work undermining your current organization. It's remarkable and it's very simple. It's told like a story, it's a very cool read and he's a brilliant author. So if you haven't picked up that book, I highly recommend it. Please check it out. It will help you transform your team into a superpower that will lead you and your organization to new heights. Thanks so much for listening, I appreciate it.